so good morning everyone this is dr vineet sehgal and welcome to this early morning session of numero uno in ophthalmology series the topic that i am going to discuss is the toxoplasma and the cytomegalovirus retinitis these are the two infections which are very commonly asked in your exam and also of the clinical relevance to all the ophthalmologists who are seeing this session okay so i am your ophthalmology educator dr vineet sehgal done my post graduation from all indian institute of medical sciences and right now the consultant mm -hmm. in charge glaucoma sharp side group of eye hospitals you can see all my video lectures exclusively on the anacademy learning app which you can download from the io store or the play store mm -hmm. and if you want you can basically subscribe for the plus course as well where there are a lot of educators who are trying to make you perfect day in and day night with their classes special classes and the plus classes also remember you can have a subscription of the plus course where you want just live classes or if you want the recorded lectures as well as well as the question bank 2.0 and the rapid revision course you can subscribe for the iconic subscription as well and use my code ofthel10 to get a 10% discount on whatever course that you want so with this i would be starting my session that is on the first we would talk about the ocular toxoplasma and then we would talk about the cytomegala virus retinitis so first of all toxoplasma you must have read this topic in detail in microbiology so just telling you a brief about toxoplasma that it is a obligate intracellular parasite okay it goes inside the retinal cells proliferates there and then it basically damages the host cell and then this infect the surrounding cells this is the main funda of the infection that occurs with the toxoplasma now this toxoplasma can be acquired or it can be a congenital form also if it is a congenital form it is because of the child getting the infection from the blood stream from the placenta if it is acquired form in the acquired form it is basically acquired through the gi system okay remember one very important thing that was asked in the exam is that the ocular toxoplasma is the most common cause of infectious chorioretinitis okay so it is the most common cause of infectious chorioretinitis so those students who are basically participating in this session you can just take a screenshot of themselves liking this session and send it to the anacademy telegram groups there are two telegram group let's track neat pg as well as the other telegram group that is the neat pg ini ct fmg group you can just put a screenshot there i would send you the notes of the ocular toxoplasma and cytomegalovirus retinitis also in the telegram group of the anacademy okay now what are the various ocular manifestations of the toxoplasma the first and the foremost manifestation is the inflammation of the choroid as well as the retina when the choroid and retina both are involved we call this as the chorioretinitis i also told you that it is the most common cause of infectious chorioretinitis or posterior uveitis in adults not only it can cause a posterior uveitis it can also cause a spillover anterior uveitis okay so the next manifestation i come to the anterior uveitis and this chorioretinitis basically then causes the inflammation of vitreous that is called vitreitis okay this basically leads to a important manifestation that is called headlight in fog appearance so sometimes they ask in the exam in which organism infection you get a headlight in fog appearance so headlight and fog appearance you see in the toxoplasma infection i write it in the short form toxoplasma okay then sometimes because of its predisposition to the macular area this can cause a cnvm cnvm the full form is choroidal neovascular membrane if the patient is suffering from congenital toxoplasma then it can be a very important cause of the congenital cataract also okay so congenital cataract is there in the congenital toxoplasma rarely it can cause glaucoma also because of the uveitis this can cause 
the blockage of trabecular meshwork which can cause increased intraocular pressure okay so i revise it once again what are the various important ocular manifestations most common is the chorioretinitis followed by the anterior uveitis vitritis choroidal neovascular membrane cataract and glaucoma okay remember the toxoplasma has the most important predisposition to macula very important is it has a predisposition to the macular area okay chal with this i tell you what is the pathogenesis of the your toxoplasma infection so first of all what happens is that this toxoplasma infection whether it is acquired from the uh, uh, mother or if it is acquired uh, from the uh, gi system it infects infects the retina after it infects the retina then it causes the inflammation of choroid okay so first is that it causes the inflammation of retina followed by the choroid then it basically as you know the toxoplasma causes cyst cyst is present at the border of the scar so let's see what it means that means that this is let's say your eyeball okay and you have a scar here okay so you have a scar here a chorioretinal scar okay and you have the cyst in the border of the scar so they may be uh, indolent and they may not be very active but they can become active at any point of time let's say there is a uh, immune uh, changes in the body then this can basically cause the reactivation of the cyst and these cyst basically then rupture and they can cause the inflammation of the surrounding area they can cause the inflammation of the surrounding area and this causes the vitritis okay so this is basically the pathogenesis of the ocular toxoplasma infection you would say that sir how it looks like so i would just show you two fig figures where you can get a uh, some idea about how the toxoplasma looks like so if here in this picture you can see there is a optic nerve head okay so you can hazily see the optic nerve head and you are not able to see the vessels of the retina clearly okay so this is a haze can you appreciate this is a haze and this is the yellow light which is coming can i call it a headlight in a fog appearance so if you can say that there is so whether they ask that if there is a headlight in a fog appearance so this means there is a active toxoplasma infection in the retina and in this case where you can see there is a chorioretinal scar okay so this is a chorioretinal scar parafoveally so this can be a quiescent or a healed scar okay but remember even a quiescent or a healed scar can become active at any point of time so you have to be very very careful even in the toxoplasma infections which even have healed okay so that is very very important in these patients and they basically can cause the retinal necrosis so the treatment is definitely indicated in the patients of active toxoplasma infection how you would do it you can just remember it by uh, the very important thing is that you can basically give whenever there is a vitritis you have to give steroids okay so most important thing that you give in these patients is steroids okay so i just tell you about the treatment protocol here so if you are getting a patient of a uh, active toxoplasma infection you basically start the patient on steroids oral steroids okay you can also give the intravitreal steroids there and with this you can basically have a antibiotic which would have effect on the toxoplasma and that is the two antibiotics you remember spiramycin and my favorite trimethoprim sulfamethoxol okay so these are the two very very important antibiotics that would be very very effective in these patients of the 
तो एक्टिव टॉक्सोप्लाज्मा इन्फेक्शन ओके सो दीज आर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर रिगार्डिंग द टॉक्सोप्लाज्मा इन्फेक्शन विद दिस आई बेसिकली मूव टू माई नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज द सी एम वी रेटेनाइटिस सी एम वी इज द साइटोमेगेलो वायरस रेटेनाइटिस रिमेंबर साइटोमेगेलो वायरस यू मस्ट हैव बेसिकली डन इन योर माइक्रोबायोलॉजी सेक्शन इट इज अ डबल स्टैंडर्ड डी एन ए वायरस ओके इट इज अ डबल स्टैंडर्ड डी एन ए वायरस एंड इट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ डिमिनेशन ऑफ विजन इन द एच आई वी पॉजिटिव और इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज पेशेंट्स ओके सो इट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ डिमिनेशन ऑफ विजन इन एच आई वी पॉजिटिव और इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज पर्सन सो फ्रेंड्स देर इज अ स्पेशल सेशन आई हैव टेकन ऑन द मोस्ट कॉमन लिस्ट यू कैन जस्ट गो टू द स्पेशल क्लास सेक्शन on the an academy learning app if you are not having it right now you can just download it from the play store and use my code ofthel10 okay you by using the code ofthel10 you can unlock the free platform there you can just go to the special classes i have taken and just write most common in ophthalmology okay you would see a special class you can download the pdf also and you would have the most common list in ophthalmology because this is most common list sometimes very confusing to you and very difficult to basically get all the points in one single pdf okay chal with this what is the pathogenesis of the cytomegalovirus so cytomegalovirus like your toxoplasma most importantly it is basically having a pathogenesis towards the retina okay so it causes the retinal necrosis the word that you have to remember is necrosis retinal necrosis very important word okay so what happens here is that the blood vessels so let's say these are your blood vessels okay so the area of necrosis is around the blood vessels okay around the blood vessels there is a whitening there is a hemorrhage there are exudates there are pigmentation so what would happen is there this area around the blood vessel this may be selectively involved so rest of the fundus is normal but you have a selective involvement of the area around the blood vessels this is basically called a pizza pie appearance okay can you appreciate let's say if i basically make this area as red white and some black so it would you would it would look like some pizza uh the a piece of pizza okay this is called pizza pie appearance and as the infection increases this can also increase with time okay so this may also increase with time in these patients so this is basically called a pizza pie appearance okay so there can be two variants one variant is that the cytomegalovirus let's say the patient is a on the your immuno uh he is a immune competent patient there is not much infection there some granules here and there you may get okay this is called a granular appearance and the more commonly or more serious infection that we see where the blood vessels which are around the retina they may be sheathing there may be sheathing around it ओके शीथिंग मीन्स व्हाइटिश सा कलर तुम्हें ब्लड वेसल्स के अराउंड दिखाई देगा ओके सो दिस इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड फ्रॉस्टेड ब्रांच एंजाइटिस ओके सो फ्रॉस्टेड ब्रांच एंजाइटिस रिमेंबर दिस इज द मोर सीवियर वेराइटी एंड दिस पेशेंट मे बी लीडिंग इन टू द रेटनल नेक्रोसिस वी नीड टू ट्रीट दीज टाइप ऑफ पेशेंट्स एंड द टू इंपॉर्टेंट मेडिकेशन दैट आई आई वुड यूज वेन एवर वी हैव अ साइटोमेगेलो वायरस रेटनाइटिस इन्फेक्शन दैट आर द जेन साइक्लोविर एंड द फॉस्कर नेट if you want to remember only one just go with the drug of choice that is gencyclovir sometimes cmv infection is more commonly seen in the immunocompromised hiv positive individuals and these patients are already on the heart therapy okay and you would see that there are there is uveitis coming in these patients so i call it immune constitution uveitis so there is no infection there everything is normal and suddenly you have a bout of uveitis this is basically because of the immune reconstitution of this heart therapy so before i end the session there is a basically recap of what are the infections that can be asked in the retina these are from the toxoplasma we we told you toxoplasma can have a feature of the pizza pie appearance with syphilis you remember you can have salt and pepper retinopathy also you may have chorio retinal scars 
in the non retinal uh, manifestations you can have a argel robertson pupil in the cmv retinitis i told you pizza pie appearance with the cystic sarcosis you may have some cysts and with the nocardia you may have the pearls over the retina okay whitish spots near the retina and with the hsv you may have retinal necrosis okay so with this i basically end my session thank you very much for basically uh, seeing this session you can use my code of tel10 to unlock the free platform and hit the bell icon for the notifications thank you and i would be back with a special class at 10 pm today till then have a good day